Hello there, and welcome to Poor Unfortunate Podcast. I'm Caroline Ametti. And I'm Connor Perkins. Welcome, listeners, to a brand new episode of Caroline What's New, our bi weekly mini episode series where we talk about all the latest and greatest in Disney news. This episode is being recorded on Sunday, September 8th, 2024. So, Caroline, what's new? Well, since we usually start by talking about the parks, I guess I will say that I went to Disney World for a couple of days. I I didn't know about this, folks. And then she told me, and then I was like, oh, this is fine, because she was going to just not do any park stuff. She was just going to stay at the hotel. And I was like, oh, that is so cool. I'm like, what a great experience. I'm like, you'll be able to tell us how to do Disney on a budget, like how we can still have these magical experiences at the park. And I was defending her up and down to people. And then this bitch went into (laughs) the fucking park. Well, I just want to say, and nobody's going to believe me. I was completely 100% open to not going to the parks and having like a Disney staycation kind of deal. And my husband was like, no, we're here. It's food and wine. We got to go. We have to go to the parks. And I was like, okay, let's, I mean, jury, did he have to twist my arm? Definitely not. But I was like, okay, cool. We're just going to go to Epcot and we're going to keep it chill. We're going to go to food and wine and all of that. And we're spending a great day at Epcot. We have our one park ticket. And then he gets on Guardians of the Galaxy and he's like, we're park hopping. We're, we're going to go to Hollywood Studios. And I was like, I don't know. Maybe we should save money. And he insisted. I swear to God that he insisted. I feel cuckolded <laughs> right now. I feel betrayed. No, but I do want to say, I want to say this. The other day, we went for one day to the parks. The other days of the trip, no, we did no parks. And it was fantastic and is totally doable and amazing. We stayed at Coronado Springs. And I have to say, like, I highly recommend that it's like if you're trying to like mix things up, have a different kind of Disney trip, simplest thing you can do is just stay at a new hotel. I had never stayed at mm-hmm. Coronado Springs before. And it, it was made nice. it, it's so it's I actually really I loved it so much more than I thought I would. And it just really, I feel like Coronado Springs, especially with the theming, like you could kind of be, you could obviously be somewhere in Mexico almost where it's like Mm -hmm. you could have a resort vacay there and like just do that and have an amazing time. It made it feel like I was really somewhere new. And we, um, we ate at Toledo, which is on the, like the top level of the Grandestino Tower, which is like a tapas restaurant. That was awesome. And that was kind of the theme as well as like We really were like, let's just do things we've never done. Aside from the day that we went to the parks. I'm very sorry. Mm -hmm. But we had never eaten at Toledo before. We visited the Riviera Resort, which I had never been to before. I went back to the Wilderness Lodge for the first time in ages. I love the Wilderness Lodge. Love the Wilderness Lodge. Also, the Riviera was beautiful. We ate at like the quick service there. We got a drink. We ate at Steakhouse 71 in the Contemporary, and we absolutely loved it. That was amazing. Um, Got like chicken Mickey waffles at one of the restaurants at Coronado. Just like lots of really like fun and interesting things. Uh, The two L's of the trip were that number one, we tried to go see Disney dreams that soar at Disney Springs. And we went on a Sunday night of Labor Day weekend. And it was was one of the final performances. uh Uh-huh. And we literally got there and heard the announcement like this, like the viewing area is at capacity and Disney Springs was swarming like I've never seen. And I was seriously like, we need to get out of here. I hate this. So we did not see it, which is a bummer. And also on one of our non-parks days, I was like, awesome. Like I have all of this time to commit to finally going to Trader Sam's Grog Grotto, which I've been trying to do in both Disney World and Disneyland for years. And once again, we were like, cool, we'll wait two hours. They told us it'd be a two hour wait. We're like, no problem. We can commit it. We're doing it. Two hours came and went and we were like, we can't now. We need to like leave. We have a late dinner. So once again, I did not go there. Um, but we can talk about it. I think we should do an episode. We have friends who have gone to Disney and not gone to the parks at all. And I think it's a really interesting thing. And there's so, so much fun that can be had that we didn't even do. So it was a really great time. And I'm sorry that you I'm glad you had that. by me. I'm glad you had that. Okay. It really is a lesson. There will never, there's an endless amount of things to do at Walt Disney World Resort. So like if you're trying to convince someone who's not super into the parks, they can have a good time too. But anyway. (laughs) Eat glass. (laughs) Let's hop over to Magic Kingdom news. Tron Light Cycle Run will begin offering a standby queue for guests starting on September 9th. So tomorrow. The attraction will still be a Lightning Lane single pass offering. 
But now that it won't be a uh, virtual queue anymore, just Tiana's Bayou Adventure and Cosmic Rewind, those will be the only two rides in Walt Disney World that now offer virtual queues. So I like the virtual queue, but I think it's nice to be like, if you want to commit the time and you want to get on, I think it's nice. I think it's a good thing. Big announcement. There is going to be a new live show starring Disney villains that will debut in Hollywood Studios in summer 2025. The show will replace Lightning McQueen's Racing Academy and the car show will close permanently on October 7th. This is how Disney Parks blog describes the show. The creative minds at Disney Live Entertainment will transform Sunset Showcase into the mysterious reflective realm of the magic mirror. The show will feature appearances by dozens of the most infamous evildoers with fiendish foes Cruella de Vil, Captain Hook, and Maleficent, each breaking through the glass to take the stage in live production numbers. It's just so funny that this is what we were talking about when we started talking yeah. about a show at Villain's Land. And when you were this. like, this is what I don't want it to be. <laughs> and, like, and then they're not- like... <laughs> I was like, please, not a villain's variety show. And we're getting one. But anyway, (laughs) before we get there, one piece of concept art for the show features not just those three villains described by Disney Parks blog, but also Hades, Jafar, the Queen of Hearts, Scar, and Ursula. So that's that's a very exciting crew to me. I will say that. Um, Something I completely forgot about until I was reading this on Walt Disney World News today, the future site of the show where the Lightning McQueen's Racing Academy is now is the previous home of Club Villain, which was part of Hollywood Studios from January through March 2016 and then again in October 2017. And I'm like, I know the name Club Villain, but why do I remember nothing about what that entailed? It's very... I don't remember it. Nothing. So it was um, a separately ticketed event, so that's probably why I don't remember anything about it. Uh, It was hosted by Dr. Facilier. It featured like a DJ, villain appearances, a potions bar, New Orleans-inspired cuisine all of this stuff, separately ticketed thing. So while it's very fun that the space is being returned to the villains, this feels very messy knowing that the villains are going to have a home in Magic Kingdom, even if it is several years down the line. So this ties back to our conversation about, you know, Monsters, Inc. being in both Magic Kingdom and Hollywood Studios from our D23 episode. Just like if we're having a land, not just an attraction, but a land dedicated to these characters or a certain IP, it feels like they shouldn't be in multiple places. So will they move the show? Only time. I think will the tell. show will move. I think mm-hmm. I think that this is the excitement around Villains Land, and they know that's going to be a long time coming, and they're mm-hmm. trying to give us something to hold us over. Yeah. Um, but and I think it'll go as soon as Villains Land mm-hmm. happens. Mm-hmm. But yeah, furthering the detriment of Hollywood Studios and. If you want to know what Hollywood Studios could be, make sure that you watch our TikTok and our reel where we talk about yes. Disney Infinite City because yes. we fixed it. It's a matter of branding, baby. Yeah, I mean, because that's the thing is like Lightning McQueen doesn't have a place in Hollywood Studios right now either. So I can't even complain about what are villains doing here because that that area is already a complete non sequitur. So. Well, at least cars make sense next to Rock and Roller Coaster, which is a car. <laughs> For a second, I was like, what is he about? How is he going to defend this? <laughs> well, I, oh, that's man. how I'm like, it's car and car. Okay. That's very, very generous of you. <laughs> I don't know. It made sense to me. <laughs> it's very nice. All right. But, you know, I'll be, you know, I will definitely be going to see that whenever it's available to me. So it is what it is. Let's hop over to uh, Disneyland. I feel like we don't we don't really give Disneyland enough time on here. I'm sorry. We're big Disney World people, so I'll try to include more Disneyland news whenever possible. So Downtown Disney and Disneyland is getting some new restaurants, including the Carnaby Tavern, the second floor table service concept for Earl of Sandwich. So it's going to be inspired by like 60s British rock and roll, which I think is super fun. There will also be the transformation of Marceline Confectionery into Disney Wonderful World of Sweets. And then a table and quick service restaurant from Chef Joe Isidori, along with several new shops. And this is all part of the major downtown Disney transformation. It's a lot of new amazing restaurants there. I'm very excited to see what else they get because it's there's so much more than even when I was there a couple of years ago. Very exciting. 
So let's hop back over to Walt Disney World and some other Disney World news. That is kind of the final point we want to make in this parks news section. So on August 29th, actually right after Connor and I finished recording an episode of the podcast, um, there was a false active shooter reported at Magic Kingdom. So allegedly what actually happened is that a fight broke out amongst guests around the time of park closing, somewhere near the monorail, Main Street USA, somewhere in that area. And uh, so a fight broke out. And what is believed to be a balloon caused a popping sound, leading to guests panicking, running, and the rumor of an active shooter spreading around the park. We are so glad that everyone is safe. Honestly, we hope the guests who started the fight are banned from the park. You have heard us talk here many times about the issue of violence in the parks, and I have absolutely had enough of it, and the panic that it causes and how inappropriate it is for adults to be fighting. I mean, we can go on and on. And most of all, um, we hope that someday we can live in a country that is free from the threat of gun violence that has everyone on their vacation so on edge that a sound like that could cause such panic and an unfortunately understandable panic, which is so, so sad. Uh, And on that note, are you registered to vote? Election day is coming. Also on that note. Prices have increased for Fantasmic dining packages in Hollywood Studios. So though a $6 increase for adults, which, by the way, is considered anyone 10 years old and up, (laughs) uh, may not seem like much, this pushes the most expensive restaurant in the package, the Brown Derby, to $83 per person for dinner. So that could be $83 for a 10-year-old. For dinner and seating for a show that is free. Yes, I understand it's reserved, you know, prime seating for the show. So back to what I was talking about with the fight in the park. Should grown adults ever resort to violence during a dispute? Never. But is Disney creating the least ideal situations possible with ever-increasing prices, scarcity mindsets like reserved seating for a show that is free in a gigantic theater, and overcrowding? Absolutely. The times when I have seen fights break out, both of the times when I saw grown men punching each other, it was during the fireworks. It was on Main Street. It was when people feel this intense need because of the amount of money that they have invested in this experience to get the most out of it. And it's overcrowded and you get tense. It's just the reality of it. So I think there's an it's a topic we'll continue to talk about on here of what hand does Disney play in this? Because they do play a hand in it. They do. Absolutely. Let's talk about something else. (laughs) Yeah, let's talk about something else. So let's move on to Disney+. Plus. Let's talk about some things that are now available. So Disney+, Plus has officially rolled out the first of the channels that they had announced a while back. These channels allow users to join a live broadcast stream on Disney+, Plus based on different interests. So exactly like how cable TV works. It's there. (laughs) You know, whatever. (laughs) <laughs> um, since Hulu is now with Disney Plus, the hit show Only Murders in the Building is back. It premiered on August 27th. The first two episodes are now available, with the third becoming available on September 12th at 12 a.m. Pacific. Additionally, the show has been renewed already for season five, which just goes to show that there is something about TV shows uh coming back at the same time with yearly <laughs> intervals. There's something Something about that uh, that feels very reminiscent of what made TV so successful for so long. Um, I don't know. Maybe there's something to it. it. Uh, The new comedy drama FX show English Teacher created by and starring Brian Jordan Alvarez premiered with the first two episodes on September 2nd and was available the next day on Hulu. The third episode airs tonight when you're listening to this, September 9th at 10 p.m. Eastern Pacific, and then it'll be available on Hulu the next day. The show is certified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes and has debuted to rave reviews. It follows Evan Marquez, a gay high school teacher in Austin, Texas, who often finds himself at the intersection of the personal, professional, and political aspects of working at a high school. Uh, It's kind of like the hot new show for the fall. So make sure that you check it out. And then uh, the other big thing in now available Disney Plus news. So The Bachelorette had its finale on Tuesday, September 3rd. And this thing has been making waves. Spoiler alert if you're a Bachelor Nation person. Jen Tran, the first Asian American lead of the Bachelorette franchise, was brought out on stage ahead of airing footage of the proposal on the show to explain that her fiance from the show, Devin, 
broke up with her via a 15-minute phone call after their engagement. Devin was then brought out on stage, allowing Jen to see him for the first time since their engagement ended. And then ABC did the cruelest thing ever. Jesse Palmer, the host of the show, said that they could now all watch the footage of the proposal uh, together, even though the network had stopped airing the footage out of what was assumed to be some sort of respect. And he asked Jen if that would be okay, and she asked, quote, do I have a choice? Fans of the show were shocked at the brazen twist of the knife to such a history-making lead with her live reaction crying in a little box in the corner of the screen. So it's brought the treatment of the people on the show, especially women, back into the public discourse again because, like, fuck, man. Like... Ah, uh, Connor, Connor and I have fallen off the franchise. We used to be we used to be avid viewers um, and we've both fallen off of it. This was giving me Ari and Becca vibes where he... Ended yeah. the engagement live on television at the uh-huh. finale. Uh, ooh, I forgot about and that. And I'm like, this is just, it feels kind of like Hunger Gamesy almost. And in, in the sort of mm-hmm. like, uh, how cruel can we be to people? Mm-hmm. Uh, it, I don't like it. I don't mm-hmm. like it. Um, but things that are announced coming soon, I know I keep talking about it, but I want to give you some details about Agatha All Along, which premieres on September 18th. It premieres at 6 p.m. Pacific with the first two episodes. So this will not be a midnight drop as folks are used to. And then every additional episode will premiere each Wednesday at that same time, the 6 p.m. Pacific time. So that's 9 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, And then Dancing with the Stars premieres live on ABC and Disney Plus on September 17th at 8, 7 central. The cast has been announced, including Jen Tran from The Bachelorette. The Pommel Horse Olympian Guy, Steven Nedarazic, Tori Spelling, and an ankle monitor wearing convicted felon, Anna Delvey Sorokin. So this casting in particular has been extremely controversial, highlighting the privilege afforded to certain people in our criminal justice system and U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement. Whoopi Goldberg and fellow hosts of The View went in hard on this disparity out of all the celebrities to do Dancing with the Stars, we're choosing felons now. I know. I, I know. I can't even give it any more brain space. So now let's go to Disney films. So things that are available. There's no new news here that I can think of. It's kind of like yeah. the same old, same old. I'm not going to keep talking about Inside Out 2. We've talked about it to death. <laughs> but announced coming soon. So this news kind of goes with Disney+, Plus, but I'm going to talk about it here. Disney is in early development of a young adult film reimagining from director Kenny Ortega of The Phantom of the Opera. The spec script was written by Giovanni M. Porta with a story by him and Eric Bromberg. Now, it's important to note that this is based on the 1909 novel by Gaston Leroux and currently has no affiliation with Andrew Lloyd Webber's stage musical adaptation or the subsequent film adaptation that starred Emmy Rossum and Gerard Butler. Apparently, Disney is thinking that this story has the potential to follow in the footsteps of franchises like The Descendants and High School Musical, which were both helmed by Kenny Ortega. Um, I'm... Um, <laughs> If this moves forward in that way, I'm I'm just kind of like, I have some questions. Because I don't think that this story in particular is one that we need to readapt for young audiences to idolize, considering it's a story of obsession, manipulation, and possessiveness uh, of a romantic interest. And I feel like I can say that because I played the fucking Phantom. Um <laughs> That's what it's about. I, the, the, the whole thing that cracks me up about this is just like thinking about the meeting of where this idea came about. But I'm not going to lie to you. I read the novel when I was like in high school, maybe even middle school. And I, like 14 year old me is super into this. <laughs> I can't even lie to you. I just don't want to see the musical zombies-esque. Like. Yeah. I am very friggin' intrigued. <laughs> Uh, no ma'am and then I, I don't think we have any like miscellaneous stuff so that's where we're gonna end this one thank you so much for listening make sure that you follow us on social media we're at poor unfortunate podcast and we will be back next week with a rant and rave episode so until then 
Beluga Sabruga. Beluga Sabruga.